Well, it's almost the end of 2024, so I thought I'd have an astronomy year in review video and what a year it was for astronomical events. Multiple aurora displays, one of them seen worldwide, a total solar eclipse over much of North America, and a naked eye comet seen in both hemispheres. But it wasn't without its tragedies too, and shortcomings. For me personally, and in the loss of some big names of people who made significant contributions to astronomy, we lost NASA astronaut Tom Stafford of Apollo fame, star map maker Will Tyrion, nebula cataloger Beverly Lenz, and tragically, so young, we lost the gifted photographer of the night sky, Alan Wallace. As for events, the much touted and anticipated recurring nova T. Corona never came to fruition. For me personally, the year began with an astronomical first. In January, I went to Fairbanks, Alaska and saw my first ever aurora borealis. It was incredible. And this isn't an astronomical event so much as an atmospheric one, but I also experienced the coldest weather I've ever been in. It was minus 40 degrees the entire week we were in Fairbanks. In March, we went back to Fairbanks and we saw even more aurorae. Then at the end of March, I participated in my first ever star party when I volunteered as a mentor at a beginner's star party in Marin, California. And that evening, I was tired, so I left my astronomy equipment in the car overnight and the car was broken into and much of my astronomy equipment was stolen, including my sketches and my logbook. But then in April, we went to Lampasas, Texas, where I saw my first ever total solar eclipse. It was life-changing, jaw-dropping, exquisite, and sublime. And I can't wait till 2026 to see my next one in Spain. The weather was very questionable, and it seemed like we might not even see it at all when the clouds suddenly parted and we all got a great look at the glorious total solar eclipse. And this is how lucky we were. A couple of hours later, there was a ferocious hailstorm with golf ball sized hail. I didn't think anything in 2024 could eclipse that total solar eclipse. But then in May, I went to my house in Montana at 45 degrees latitude and on May the 10th, there was a G5 geomagnetic storm the strongest geomagnetic storm in decades, and it took my breath away. And it lasted for hours, and it covered the entire sky all the way to the zenith with beautiful curtains and swirls and colorful streaks of red, green, yellow, and even purple. The storm was so intense that at times, I felt as though the sun's charged particles that were entering the Earth's atmosphere would rain down on me and touch me and I wondered if I might be electrocuted. <laughs> the storm was so intense that it was seen all over the world. As far south as Alabama and North America, it was one of the most memorable events of my entire life. But the sun wasn't done yet by any means. In June, I went camping in a dark sky site, and that was wonderful. But while I was there, I was nearly swept away by a sudden flash flood that occurred while I was out hiking. But I survived, and I returned to my home in California. And late in July, the San Mateo County Sheriff's Department contacted me, and they advised me that they had apprehended one of the criminals that had broken into my car and stolen my astronomy equipment. And finally, I caught up with the sheriff on July 30th, and he returned some of the items to me. That evening, I went stargazing at Pinnacles National Park, where I was accosted and harassed by a ranger and told I would be given a ticket for stargazing if I didn't move out of the parking lot. I moved out of the parking lot, as instructed, since he wouldn't go away or turn off his headlights. And minutes later, after I had retained my dark adaptation, I saw a fireball, and this fireball was extremely bright, and it exploded in the sky. It was breathtaking. 
but I had no one to share my joy with because I was the only person there. Then that evening on the way home from Pinnacles, tragically, my car hydroplaned on a foot of water that was running across the highway from a broken water main and my car flipped over into a ditch full of water, inundating my telescope and other equipment with muddy water. My beloved Mead LX85 8-inch Schmidt cassock rain I thought for sure was dead on arrival and could never be revived. After much thought, I gave it away in a raffle to one of the subscribers to my YouTube channel named Alexis to try to repair it. And we'll get back to that telescope in a minute. As always, for the Perseid meteor shower, I went to a dark sky site, and on the night of August 12th, I went out on the driveway to watch the meteor shower, and not only was it one of the best Perseid meteor showers in terms of numbers of meteors, I mean, not like the one I saw in the 1990s where I saw hundreds of meteors per hour, but it was pretty intense. And I saw a bolide, a fireball that exploded in the sky before my very eyes. And I caught the fireball exploding with my camera as I was making a time lapse. And the fireball left a trail of smoke after it had exploded. And it was all on my camera and seared into my memory. I'll never forget it. I nearly fainted when I saw it. And incredibly, during the meteor shower, there was another beautiful aurora borealis display. And that evening, there was also a pretty conjunction of Jupiter and Mars with the aurora in the background. On August 27th, my mother's birthday, may she rest in peace, was yet another geomagnetic storm. It wasn't as intense as the one on May 10th, but pretty stupendous. While I was out admiring this beautiful aurora display, there was this odd magenta and white swirl that I captured with my camera on a time lapse I was making and then I saw from my driveway. And later I learned it was my first ever STE. That stands for Strong Thermal Emission Velocity Enhancement. They're related to, but different from, aurora. Pretty neat. And the aurora was pretty neat too. It seemed like astronomy life couldn't get any better. But wait, there's more. On October 7th, there was another solar flare that resulted in another incredible aurora display. And in this aurora, I witnessed this odd red arc that was over my house, and I found out later it was a SAR. It should be called a SARA, a stable auroral red arc. It was the reddest thing I'd ever seen in the sky. Then, just three days later, on October the 10th, there was another geomagnetic storm. This one was only a G4. <laughs> Only, it was cloudy at my house in Dark Skies, Montana, so we drove out to Canyon Ferry Lake in Helena, and we saw a phenomenal aurora display that again covered the entire sky from horizon to horizon all the way to the zenith. It was something to behold. And then on October 12th, Comet Sejin Chan Atlas C2023A3 became visible to the naked eye in the northern hemisphere. I've been lucky in my life when it comes to naked eye comets. I saw the famous return of Comet Halley in the 1980s, and then I saw the Comet of the Century, the beautiful and awesome Comet Hale Bop that could easily be seen even from a city. But most memorable to me was the night I saw it with my nephew and my parents from a parking lot in Yosemite National Park. I'll never forget it. It had two tails that streamed well beyond it, and it was fantastic and bright. It seemed like nothing could ever top that comet. <laughs> but then, finally, another naked eye comet came along this year. On October 13th, I stood in my driveway from Dark Skies, Montana, and I saw the fabulous naked eye comet, Sejin Chan Atlas. It had a beautiful 15-degree long tail. It wasn't as bright as Hale Bop, I don't think there will ever be another comet as bright as hell bop in my lifetime. But it was very impressive and beautiful to look at from a dark sky site. That was pretty cool. But then tragedy struck. My beloved telescope, by far and away, oh, wow. the best telescope I've ever owned, and a telescope oh, that gave me hours upon hours of joy, and that I had named Artemis, 
fell off of the JMI wheelie bar that I kept it on in order to easily pull it out into the driveway. Ironically, while I was making a video about safely moving a heavy telescope, it shattered the vulnerable corrector plate that sits out at the end of the telescope on a Schmidt Cassegrain. My BBHS diagonal was also shattered. Everything else on the telescope was intact. The primary mirror, the secondary mirror, and the go-to mount was fine. I called three different repair shops, and all of them advised me that it could not be repaired because Mead was out of business, and they said Mead manufactured the corrector plates and mirrors as sets. So according to these experts, you couldn't just replace the corrector plate. I was devastated and very saddened. I was so dejected and despondent that for the longest time I couldn't even look at it and it just sat in a corner in the storage room. Out of the blue, I got an email from Alexis letting me know that he had finished repairing my <laughs> beloved Mead 8 inch Schmidt Cassegrain. He sent me pictures of it and it looked great. He and his father did a fantastic job restoring this very badly damaged telescope to its previous glory. And not only that, but he decided to devote the telescope to bringing the joy of astronomy to others by taking it to star parties and letting people who would otherwise not have the opportunity to see things in the night sky in a telescope to look through it. And oddly enough, he took it to a star party at Griffith Park Observatory in Los Angeles which coincidentally was where I had my first ever look at Saturn in a telescope in their spectacular 12-inch refractor that they have there. I remember it to this day. I could not be happier with how my mean 8-inch telescope ended up bringing astronomy to the public. What a wonderful conclusion to this otherwise sad tale of the life and times of my mean 8-inch telescope. Thank you, Alexis. I can't thank you enough for bringing my little telescope back to life and dedicating it to bringing astronomy to the public. Hooray to Alexis and to your father. What a wonderful Christmas gift. So that's the end of this review of the incredible, unforgettable year of astronomical events of 2024. I'll never forget it, but I'm sure next year there'll be even more awe-inspiring astronomical events to look forward to and in the years to come as well. That's it for now. I'll see y'all soon. Until then, get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off.